Many of us have been layering up in hoodies and turtlenecks and other layers as colder, wetter weather arrives. One demographic, though, is known to show a little resistance to the cold. Some children and teenagers choose not to wear coats, be it for convenience or wanting to look cool. Here's what students at Calgary's Western Canada High School had to say last month about the outer layers that are clearly optional for some. Why choose a t-shirt when there's snow on the ground? I have a jacket in my locker. I okay. just didn't want to wear it right now. If you look good, you feel good, even though you're freezing. They want to like show their fit off. Like if you wear like snow pants to school, you're probably gonna get a little bit of backlash. It's just two sweaters. It's not too bulky, and you can just shove it in your bag if you're like too warm. I'd rather be cold and have a cute vest than be wearing a bulky jacket. Just looking clunky. And it makes my bag too big, so I just wear like two sweaters to school, even in like minus 30 weather. Do you ever regret your choices? Um, maybe sometimes. Yeah. If you're ever stranded waiting for the bus and you're wearing just a t-shirt and a sweatshirt, that's yeah. brutal. My mom like packs the stuff in my backpack for me, but I don't wear it. <laughs> if my mom tells me to dress warm, then like I don't regret it. If I like don't dress warm. Anything for the fit, clearly. Joining us now to talk about the cold and choosing to wear a coat is CBC Health columnist Dr. Melissa Lem. First of all, can you catch a cold from being out in the cold, not wearing a coat? Well, the easy answer would seem to be no, because mm -hmm. modern medicine tells us that we get colds from viruses mm -hmm. like coronaviruses or rhinoviruses. But the actual answer is a little bit more complicated. Your nose is your first line of defense against viruses. And when your nose gets physically cold, it actually drops its mucosal immunity. So for every five degree drop in Celsius, you actually lose about half of your immune response in your nose. Also, unlike you know here in the Lower Mainland mm -hmm. where it's pouring rain, yeah. often when it gets cold, also the humidity drops. And uh -huh. the humidity impairs the cilia inside your nose from beating and clearing out. Mm -hmm. um, these are little hairs that clear out mucus and viruses. Yep. So even though you can't actually catch a cold from cold, it does impair your response and increase your susceptibility to viruses. So how do our bodies adjust to, if we can call it extreme weather? So if you were born, let's say, you know, you're from Finland and you're used to cold weather, does that better protect you? Does it matter where you're from? Well, in the short term, there all, are all kinds of physiologic responses like vessel constriction and your heart rate going up and shivering that do adapt you to the cold in the short term. But after about two weeks, in fact, there is research showing that that shivering stops and that constriction in your vessel stops because you are adapting. And there's some kind of a healthy adipose or fatty tissue called brown fat mm -hmm. that in fact sits around our necks and around our backs that can ramp up when you're exposed to cold, when you're born in cold temperatures and also increase heat production. So it's essentially an insulating layer that you get when you're exposed to cold. Interesting. So when we saw the, the segment there, kids in coats, sometimes they just don't want to wear it. Even mom, dad packed it. Um, what do we do, what, what, what do parents and guardians do you think need to do to sort of push back on them and encourage them to wear a coat when it's cold? To be honest, I don't know that we need to push back that hard because in fact, a lot of kids, their metabolisms are higher, they're running around a lot more. I think a lot of parents have that experience in playgrounds when it's cold, we're sitting or standing, they're shivering, whereas <laughs> our kids are running around without coats yeah. on and they're totally fine. Also, the thing about uh, teenagers is one of their main developmental tasks during those years mm -hmm. is to actually separate from their parents and connect more to their peers. Add that to the fact that our brains don't fully mature until we're in our mid-20s and that prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for judgment and decision-making, doesn't quite mature. You've got a recipe for coatlessness mm -hmm. in teenagers. And what about the idea that some people just run hot yeah, and they, they don't need a coat? Yes. Because I've heard that one before. Well, absolutely. Some people do have higher metabolisms, especially people who actually tend to be fitter and who have more muscle mass as generating heat. Mm -hmm. So those kinds of people often don't want to reach for the coats as much. I mean, if you imagine going for a run, you don't want to be wearing a down puffer Ooh. if you're running, right? <laughs> Very good advice, Dr. Melissa Lem. We always appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks.